All right, welcome to the Dr. G Show. Got our little intro music. That's the same as last time. Yes, she's getting uniform. So we're talking about thyroid this whole month. So we gotta talk about like how to chill and relax and relax. have fun, bring that stress down. So as we learn all this stuff, we also have to learn how to stop exhausting. So. Absolutely. All right. Welcome everybody. So appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, this is uh, episode 181. We're talking about normalizing hyperthyroid this time and Graves' disease, which is the autoimmune version of hyperthyroid. And last week we talked about hypothyroid, which is after you've exhausted it, and Hashimoto's. So we talked about kind of why people have that and then uh, the autoimmune component to that, which again, when we talk about hyper, it's kind of uh, the precursor a lot of times to the hypothyroid. Mm -hmm. And then instead of being Hashimoto's, we call it Graves' disease because Dr. Graves uh, discovered this versus Dr. Hashimoto. So. Um, yes, it's not Graves' disease, like digging your grave. Or <laughs> thing. It's Graves, the actual, it's the actual a, person that came. That's oh, a good name. That's you a good know? Name. Uh, because it can, it can cause a lot of long-term yeah issues if you, if you have Gray's disease you're gonna want to kind of like check out because it's it's not good it's not uh, if yeah. you guys have had Graves disease so I used to have Graves disease uh, probably my in grad school uh, that's when it became a problem and I could literally feel the blood pulsing through my arms like I could feel blood pulsing through my body and I didn't need sleep and I just felt amazing. And if it wasn't for the massive headaches and the weird feeling like you're probably gonna die at any moment, uh, it would have been wonderful. <laughs> so it's kind of like uh, kind of being a superhero. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. You know, they all have the their Hulk. little they have their little uh, drawback or you know. Yeah, they always have something that's like a problem. So then I'm just like, I can conquer the world if I could just get rid of this headache. <laughs> But honestly, until I found out it was uh, hyperthyroid, I thought maybe I got like some kind of superpower because like, who could feel blood pulsing through their their veins, man? Mm. So now Very I don't, you know. So like, Hello, you everyone. know, I, I always feel like I'm pretty normal, but like I've had malignant cancer, I've had thyroid problems, I've had IBS kind of problems. I'm just like, I've had migraines before. I'm like, wait a second, although they're all gone. Mm, kind of feel like maybe I wasn't as good as I thought I was. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm signing. I'm sharing. Uh, I'm sharing our episode she's tonight. So be sure probably to, <laughs> be sure and do, and do that as well. Invite your friends. We always have lots of fun here, and yes. there's always really good, healthy information. There's lots of good stuff. We have hard science, soft science, and uh, pseudoscience. Pseudoscience. Bad jokes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, I only know a couple people with hyperthyroidism, but statistically, uh, it's quite a few people. And yes, it is. Sixty to eighty percent <laughs> of like the hyperthyroid cases uh, are autoimmune. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And we talked about it before. If you go back a few episodes, you know, we talked about kind of overexhausting our hormones. Uh, cortisol. You know, it has this kind of normal balance for us, and you know, we deal with crap and we get over it, and we, we kind of, you know, it's life. Yeah. But thy or but our lifestyles as Americans, we're the number one country for anxiety. We're the number one for depression. We're like the best at feeling the worst. And what we do is we go, oh my God, I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do everything. I'm a great multitasker. I can balance it all in. No, you can't. Yeah. And then it crashes. So as cortisol goes up and up and up and up and up it eventually crashes. So if you test it up here, you have hyperadrenal, right? And then if you test it down here, you have hypocortisol or hypoadrenal, like you've exhausted. But thyroid will go along, and when adrenals start to crash, thyroid tries to pick up the pace. And when it tries to pick up the pace, it cannot do the same effort as the cortisol, and eventually it'll be high, and then it'll crash. So the crashing is that hypothyroid that we talked about last mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. But before that is the hyper. So I remember I went to the endocrinologist 
and he said, uh, you have hyperthyroid, uh, we're going to refer you to a surgeon or to the endocrinologist. So I went to the endocrinologist and again, I'm like 20 something. I think, man, I, he's going to explain this. It's going to be amazing. And I'm going to like understand this. And he said, okay, so we can do surgery on these days. And I was like, wait, 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 why do I have this? Well, we, we don't know. We, we could do a bunch of tests, but all we're going to do is chop out your thyroid anyways. And I was like, you ain't chopping anything out of me if you can't tell me why I have this, right? Or try to regulate it somehow with some some kind of, you know. Right. Well, we're going to talk about some of that uh, regulation stuff. Yeah. But it's like they give you something and then and they it's come back and we'll try it and we'll test it again. And then if it's too high, then we'll try to adjust it then and then, then come back. And yeah. so it's just this cycle. And, you know, it could take a really long time to to balance that out doing it that method yeah and never so, addressing why exactly and you know exactly. the the funny thing is too is just like it's that mentality of when in doubt cut it out so if you guys ever heard of that uh, yeah. it's kind of the the deal like when I did surgery rounds uh, in med school I did um, we just did kind of general surgery and um, my uh, mentor was the chief of surgery there and we had a woman come in, I think it was for like Crohn's kind of symptoms, and he said it's not bad enough for surgery, and he's just like, mm -hmm. as soon as she left, he said that's the third time she's come in here for a consult, and she comes in one more time, we're just gonna cut it all out, she's gonna poop in a bag, because I'm tired of listening to it. That'll shut her up. And I was, I was like, uh, I don't think that's how this is supposed to work. Wow, but, and you know that probably does go on. Oh yeah. yeah. All the time. So it's that when in doubt, cut it out. Why not just chop it out, right? So that's that kind of like, yeah, your leg hurts, we'll just cut it off, oh, it'll be fine. Oh, so yes. our goal, so my clinic is functional lifestyle medicine. My whole philosophy forever has been functional lifestyle medicine. Know how things work, mm -hmm. know what we do to mess it up, mm -hmm. teach people to stop messing up, and your body is genetically designed to recover and repair. Mm -hmm. Your physiology is designed to repair. Um, my second pin I dropped I on the ground. It's dickling my pen here. Um, so all we got to do is stop causing problems to fix most problems, right? So that's how I fixed my uh, uh, Graves disease back in the day, and that was Graves mm. Graves. Like that was like not just hyper, but Graves. So and this isn't this is a becoming an epidemic. Well, I'm not going to yeah. say that, but no, it is. It's an Th epidemic. That's a strong word, is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, because honestly. Uh, uh, when I was doing research on this topic, I was super surprised at how many people actually have this or have symptoms. Yeah. So. And if you get that thing cut out and you don't fix why, yeah. then you have to take either natural uh, uh, thyroid or synthetic thyroid for the rest, the rest of your of entire your life. life. Every day, it's going to be a pill. Yeah. Every day. And life is like this. Your thyroid balance should be like this. Up and down, highs and then lows. Your body uh, has conservation of energy for almost everything except for thyroid. Thyroid is meant to just be able to overcome and surpass everything that you have going on. So on the short term. So if you do this in life for your thyroid, mm -hmm. but you take a medication, the medication has a predictable half-life, by, so we know uh, how long it takes before half of that's excreted out of the body. Mm -hmm. It does not fluctuate based on need. Mm -mm. So you have this kind of stuff going on, but your drug now is this, yes. and you're screwed, and then you'll, you know, you can't cope. So then they just put you on antidepressants, and 70% of those people get worse, and then they'll put you on a Bilify, which is an antipsychotic, and then they'll do this and this, and then you're just kind of screwed. And then you just keep going and going and, and going. <laughs> yeah, it's not pretty. It's, it's not, not pretty at all. So, so long, long before you ever get anything cut out, you get a third opinion from someone that has experienced normalizing and you mm -hmm. say, hey, could I do this? Mm -hmm. And then they say, yeah, uh, you're going to have to change your lifestyle. And they go, yeah, I'll just get it cut out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, th that's really true. I mean, and that, that half the time that's what people do. Yeah. They're like, oh, am I going to have to do this the rest of my life? Or am I going to have to uh, change, you know, that I can't drink beer or I can't eat potato chips or whatever? Oh, no, I can't do that. Yeah. You know, let's just go ahead and take care of the issue. And If I can't and... stop poisoning my body every <laughs> single day, all day, every day, then what's the point of even being alive? Exactly. <laughs> or smoking, which we're going to get to in a few minutes. If I can't smoke, 
I think I've heard this from a lot of my relatives. No offense, mom. But like, you know, they they get to their, their older age and they're like, man, I could smoke if I want to. I'm already, you know, 85. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stop. Um, but they're that I, way I at 45 and then 55. Well, I guess I'm saying know? 80 just to be, you know, yeah. nice, but it's that people do that in their early age too. Like, yeah. oh no, I'm gonna, oops. <laughs> I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna smoke because I want to. Nobody's gonna tell me I can't. Well, we had a guy uh, in one of my rounds that was uh, <clears throat> probably for geriatrics. Mm -hmm. Or no, no, it was for uh, 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 internal medicine. Mm -hmm. And that dude, his blood sugar was skyrocketed. He was going blind because of his diabetes. And uh, we're like, you got to kind of ease up on that sugar. And he was just like, <laughs> he got so furious. He's like, if you take away my daily ice cream, then I might as well just put a gun in my mouth and shoot myself. I'm like, that's true. Well, all right, well, good luck with blindness. Like, you'd rather be blind <laughs> than give up ice cream? That's how much of a drug effect that morphine and ice cream is, and the sugar. Oh, we're gonna talk about sugar in a minute. I'd just too. rather shoot myself than give that up and go blind. That's crazy. I have a, I have a, 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 a question for everybody. It's Ooh. a little trivia question. Trivia. Just really quickly, and then we'll get talking do, can, again. Do I get to participate? Sure. Uh, no, because you know the answer. Damn it, man. So, oh. when, and don't look this up on the internet. You can't do it. Don't do it. Uh, so when Seven. do you think <laughs> when do you think sugar was imported into the United States? What year? Ooh. So yeah, added sugar. Ponder, added sugar. Well, wouldn't that be like processed sugar? Processed sugar. Yeah. So think about this: yeah. the average teenager now gets half their daily calories just from sugar. First thing in the morning, cereal. And then kind of a cold the thing. average American consumes a hundred. 50 pounds of added sugar in 50 different forms. Mm -hmm. So if you see maltodextrin on your ingredients, it's sugar plus sugar plus sugar. Multi. We should just call it multidextrin. Hell yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, you'll see there's 50 different names for sugar. Mm -hmm. But we all kind of think we've always been this way. But when you see, when you hear uh, that number, it's like pretty crazy. That's a big like number. Like what year? Yeah. Or, when, oh, when, yeah. What year? When are you going to tell me? Oh, I'll give you. I'll give you about five minutes. You gonna remember? Yes. You sure? Yes. All right. I'd forget. <laughs> I wrote it down. Okay. So, um, Graves' disease was first described in the 1830s by Doctor Graves. Graves. What a horrible name as a doctor. I know. Oh, well, I'm gonna we go should to, look up. We should Google. You have in, in which shall we have love dentistry, Doctor Love. So it's like, should I go to Doctor Love or should I go to Doctor Grave? <laughs> like yeah. that dude should have owned funeral plots, like a cemetery. <laughs> Graves, Graves. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Dude messed oh. up. We. <laughs> or oh no, well, we won't go there, but. Uh, so, you know, this disease, the Graves part of this, has only really been well documented mm -hmm. in, in uh, just a few years. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gina, Gina said... Gina said 1800. She said 1800. She also said earlier, uh, shooting yourself slowly with the ice cream. That's what's really going on with the ice cream. It's not that quick death, it's that slow, <laughs> painful, torturous <laughs> death. Absolutely. So. Well, Gina, I think you're pretty close. Yep. Yeah, so Gina, Gina, Gina got that one. Cheers! Nice, good job. Good job. And you know what's funny is uh, the book uh, Robinson Crusoe. Mm -hmm. You know that? Mm -hmm. So he gets shipwrecked, and in the book, I was reading this to my daughters, and uh, it said, "See, I can read." <laughs> we'll read those child children's Robinson books. Robinson Crusoe. So in there, he says, uh, "I dream of the sweet foods of my homeland." And so I'm having all these ideas, right, of what he's thinking of. And then he says, peas and carrots. Yeah. And I remember, like, putting the book down and going, like, what the hell is he talking about? Right? That's crazy talk. And then it bothered me for, like, weeks. And I finally, like, Googled when that book was uh, written. It was in the 1700s. Ah. Before, before the sugar. import of sugar. That's amazing. So before we added sugar to stuff, Peas and carrots were sweet, sweet, which is why we have sweet peas 
I'm, I think most Americans mm. wouldn't be like, oh, these bees are so sweet, right? They are kind of sweet. Well, that's if you're healthy. Well, true, because you can taste all those flavors. But the average American yeah. can't tell there's added sugar to the water up to, I think, a quarter of a teaspoon. Right. So we're so desensitized to that. Uh, but same thing with carrots. Carrots are so sweet, they make cake out of carrots. Cake. I love it. Yeah. I love carrot cake. How come they don't make ice cream out of uh, carrots? You know, they're starting to make all kinds of different things these days. Like have cashew you, butter, you know, you had, all the butter. Have you had avocado ice cream? You know, who who makes that? Kato. No. I, I don't know. It's it, Kato. You can, you can find that in the grocery stores, I think. Have you guys had that? Have you, my had, have, have you had avocado ice cream? I wonder what they put in there as the sweetener. Hmm, probably a lot of sugar. <laughs> Possibly. It's I think like, there's some place in town that actually makes natural sh natural ice creams. Really? Uh, uh, lion. Uh, the lions. Little lion. Little lion. Little lion here in Wichita. If you live in Wichita, they, they make free. really good ice cream. It's dairy free. Um, it's all vegan, right? It's yes. Yeah. Yeah. When we were doing the yeah. art show, we'd go around mm -hmm. and to the art crawl, and they would have their little, like, uh, booth, uh, you know, yeah. the, not That's booth, right. uh, the wagon thing. They right? did. It's a cart. Ice cream cart? An ice cream cart. Yeah. I was so happy. We, everybody, everybody's always happy to find that one. And, and they also use, uh, they've recycled all of those um, shipping containers, too, as part, isn't that them? Oh, they're, they're in, no, they're, they're in, in the, that, they're in the front in building that of that Revolutia. Revolutia is a place in Wichita that they've actually recycled um, shipping car. Uh, yeah, those big, made a little mall. Yeah, it's pretty the, cool. Uh, it's it's a, pretty it's cool. It's across from uh, Beautiful Day Cafe. That's right, or a little bit further down. Yeah. So it's just all kind of part of that healthy atmosphere over there. Yeah. Yeah. So so we should get back to this. <laughs> it's all it's all the same. We're like we're like gosh, it's already eight o'clock. It's all the same. Yeah, we're all like, where the time <laughs> where go? The we're time all go? dicking around. We're just so. sitting here, just talking. So the average age, twenty to fifty. So let me ask you this, my wise friend. Twenty to fifty. Yes. Why? Would people have ex uh, over exhausting uh, or, or amping up their thyroid <laughs> between 20 and 50 in America? Because I think we're just trying to do too much. Yeah. Uh, which I have a big problem with. <laughs> so what happens is once you get to a stage in your life, your 20s, where you're like, oh, go get her, I'm going to go get this and get this done and I'm going to move to, this is what I did. I'm going to move to Kansas City, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and and then 30s roll around, and I'm going to do more, and I know more, and I'm and then 40s, and then by 50s, which I am, it's like somehow I'm like, I don't think I can do as much as I did <laughs> when I was in my 20s, and I need to calm it down a little bit. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think it's just we're trying, our society, we're just, we're just trying to do too much. Yeah, the 20 to 50 mm -hmm. is that... Time, like we see the average age for hormonal exhaustion about 35 years of age now where you can't eat your way back to happiness you can't distract no. from the sadness no. so that's the perfect time for this and do you guys think it's more common in women or lazy ass selfish men oh, good Lord. Mm. martyr women or s selfish men healthy selfish maybe yeah that'll work I don't know a lot of them are just plain video. they're like jerk selfish I don't think a lot of our... Oh, you got to give some guys credit. Mm. So here's the thing. Wait, do God. First if question. It, he, the question was, is it more common in men or women? And do guys deserve accolades for being healthfully, healthfully selfish? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think so. Okay. Okay, so... Whoop! Hello. Okay, so... I said that three times. So, anybody? Anybody know if it's more common in men or women? It is hormone related. I'm giving you a hint. With the exception... With the exception... Of erectile dysfunction... Oops. The answer is always women. Always. Every disease. Isn't that something? It's always women. And that's why, you know, when we all try to do too many things... <laughs> it's stress. 
yeah. lot of it is stress. It's just, uh, and, and, and there's that's just one of these causes. There's all kinds of different causes, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, some of these are some things that we've been talking about now for the last six weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. You know so. that's the thing is like okay, so all these patients have all these patients over the years that we reverse their mm -hmm. uh, autoimmune conditions, their mm -hmm. thyroid problems. And then, you know, it's just like, oh, it's amazing, but it's not rocket science. It really isn't. It's a $200,000 education to know what, how simple things are really are. I mean, that's all it really is. And it kind of comes down to a choice. You know, what we're talking about, eat the ice cream or go blind. have, mm -hmm. you know, health issues. Yeah, eat, um, eat the ice cream, go blind, mm -hmm. or eat some, you know. Or be stressed out. Choose life that stresses you out or choose life that doesn't stress you out. Make yeah. a choice. Or like Scott says, Gordon. live a life worth living. Live a life worth living. Yeah. Perfect. So you know what's funny is I have a few patients where I give them that, that's their homework is, you tell me what a life worth living looks like for you. And I'm telling you, you'd think it was a rocket uh, surgery. Like, it's crazy. It's hard. It's they hard. come back week after week, like, um, I haven't written anything down, but I'm still, like, wrapping my mind. Like, they haven't quite figured out, like, what is that? Because they're constantly just doing, and they're never allowed to just be. So you don't get that idea of, like, wait, what would a happy me be? Well, I can't, I don't got time to be happy, because I got stuff to do There's all the time. There's too much stuff to do. Yeah. So. I can't just sit on the couch and relax. What happened to that thing, like staying at home eating bonbons? <laughs> That's what my you mom You know, always I got talks this funny about. story, and then we'll get back to business here. When a long time ago, uh, I traveled uh, quite extensively throughout the country, and um, I worked as a, as a, a promotional uh, strategist um, for the, a business that I was involved with. And um, worked very hard on that. And so I went to an event one time, and, and there was a guy there um, who was also a promotional person, which I was surprised that he asked me this. But he looks at me, and he, and he says, So what do you do, sit around and eat bonbons all day? <laughs> That's funny. And I, I said, Actually, I do. But I didn't. No. I added in, by the pool. <laughs> so I was like, oh my gosh, there it is, all up in a nutshell. You know, one time my mom, she uh, was putting an engine in her car, right? So she's like, she's like me. She's, she was putting an engine in her car. Yeah, so okay. she's super handy. And uh, she was a, I don't need a man kind of woman, right? Yeah. And uh, so she's putting an engine in her car and she needed a certain bolt. And um, so she went to the hardware store and she was explaining the bolt and he said, Hey, honey, why don't you just have your husband come on in and uh, tell us what bolt it is? And she lost well. her shit. She went crazy. I bet that went wrong. <laughs> she wasn't having that. Okay. okay, so ages 20 to 50. Yeah. And mostly it's... Mm, women. Yeah. Women. Well, you kind of gave it away a minute ago when you said I most everything not. except for... It's always women. It's always women. It's always women. Okay, so it is more common in women, um, and so why is it more common in women outside of just stress? I know. Because women be tripping. <laughs> <laughs> here's another. Here's another sort of interesting t statistic. Oh. We'll go. We'll go here. She's breaking out the stats, are we? Mm -hmm. What you got? Okay, so so one of one of the causes uh for thyroid issues hyperthyroidism and probably a lot of other things is is what smoking crack cracker cigarettes okay so but the statistics are really interesting about oh yeah, yeah. women tell us, tell who us. smoke women wait wait who why smoke? would women be smoking because they're stressed out because they're stressed out that's what it is <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay, so okay, so so, so women who smoke mm -hmm. are two times likely to have Graves' disease. Bam. Twice as likely. Twice if as you smoke. likely. Likely, and women who smoke one pack a day. One pack a day, which to me seems like a lot. 
It's like 20 cigarettes. Is it, is it or is it different now? I mean, so back in the day, I only smoked when I would go drinking. And mm -hmm. I would buy like a pack of Dunhill cigarettes or something nice, cause, but I would smoke a whole dang pack. Because I just chain smoke because I'm not a smoker. Uh huh. So I just. So it was just fun smoking? But I could smoke a pack in one wow. night. Wow. That sounds like a lot. Do you know anybody out there? You know, That's you a lot. Know people that smoke a pack a day? That's a lot. Yeah. Um, and that is like, I don't know what the price is now, like $5, $7 or something? Some, pack, something maybe? like that, yeah. That's an expensive way to get thyroid problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's like paying to get sick. Yeah, that's crazy. But, you know, years ago they came out with the, uh, the, the you know, the danger uh, packaging Issue. What? Danger package. Oh, like they put the they put on the package oh, that you know, it's yeah, dangerous yeah, to yeah. smoke. Yeah. I, I wish there would be some little insert that they could put in there that <laughs> said because of this, 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 and this. You think but, people care? But women, well, people who are smoking probably are not caring no. anyway. So Dennis Leary, yeah. you remember him? Yeah. Yeah, he said you could paint the box black and put a skull and crossbones, call it cancer oh, sticks, right. and people would still smoke them. That is right. Yeah. Okay, so women who smoke one pack a day is three times more likely. Three times. So smoking is double. Smoking is double. Smoking a pack smoking is a pack triple. Smoking a pack is triple. Dang. And it takes like even 10 to 15 years after quitting to slow, to show a decline in the likelihood of getting graves. And that's not just for women, that's both men and women. Yeah, and it takes like 10 years after smoking to mm -hmm. even kind of get your genetics back to normal pre-smoking. Wow. Yeah. So every 10 years you're a brand new person, but that's how long it takes to undo that. That's crazy. That is. But that means that amazing. women that are more stressed are smoking as a way to coping. So there's mm -hmm. sugar, there's wheat, mm -hmm. there's dairy. Um, but then when that doesn't work, well, then they use smoking. Mm -hmm. And when, then, when you downregulate your dopamine to nicotine, then you smoke more and more and more. And then eventually a pack a day and then, you know. And just goes on and on. But you never fixed why. Mm hmm you you doing that stuff. And then that's crazy. Uh, yep. Yeah. And then lastly, uh, for women, uh, women who smoke during pregnancy. <laughs> guess what? It affects your baby's thyroid. Boom. Uh, excuse me. Pe women who smoke affects their baby's thyroid. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. What's funny is my my little sister. She didn't take up smoking. T like, my mom smoked like a chimney. Holy crap. And I would, uh, so I, like I didn't smoke and my niece didn't smoke and my sister didn't, my younger sister didn't smoke, my older sister did. And then, so my little sister and me are like, it's like, we're not smoking. And then my, she got pregnant and then she stuck up smoking. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, why would you take up? But that's because of stress. Mm -hmm. The stress of pregnancy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I was wow. like, what are you doing? And then that word right there. Oh, so yeah, so there's a chemical in smoke. So was, what's funny is, like, research is really interesting because a lot of times they'll be like, we just don't know, we just don't know. It's a big mystery, you know. But there is always a cause, and almost always there is, it's published research. So I can't tell you how many things that I research for patients where it's just like, well, we will figure out why. And it'll be like, don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know. And then suddenly it's just like this uh, article says, yeah, this is what, this is what causes it. Right. So there's theocyanates uh, or thiocyanates that are in nicotine, uh, or sorry, in uh, 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 cigarettes. And then that actually interferes with the thyroid, mm -hmm. uh, even leading to things like goiters in your neck. Okay, so let's talk about goiters. Goiters. Oh, the delicious my goiters. <clears throat> They're like a side meal to your thyroid. Oh, let's don't say that. <laughs> Let me show you a picture of a goiter. A delicious one. Uh-oh. You got to hold up to you so it looks like it's you. No. No? <laughs> That's a no. Yeah, so look. So check that out, y'all. That is all extra thyroid compensating from hyper or hy hypothyroid. That is right. So there you have it. That is... And they'll be... Like usually, if you, so there's a big problem now because people have gained so much weight in America that That's you amazing. can't always see goiters anymore because their necks are so supple. Okay. But That's when a they good look point. up, you can sometimes see it bulging out. And you're pushing your trachea uh, forward, 
And sometimes that's what it takes to even oh, see a goiter now. So that the neckline gets tighter. Or right. Whatever. Um, also, like a couple weeks ago, or three three weeks ago, I showed you some images of the thyroid, um, a, a normal size thyroid, and an enlarged thyroid. Sometimes, even if you, you know, some, sometimes if you have a bigger neck, you know, there's going to be uh, evidence of it. So, keep yeah. an eye on that. And that sometimes, like, I know when I go to the doctor for um, exam, an annual or whatever, that's what they'll check. They'll yeah. check that thyroid, the size of the thyroid. So, um, if your doctor is not checking that when you go, <laughs> that's a bad thing. You're going to have to do it on your own, or find a doctor or someone who's going to help you out with that. Um, yeah. So, okay. So, smoking. Um, we 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 talk about that. Plus, we talk about a lot of like stress and smoking yeah. and and things that are pretty much some some big. Uh, ticket items for you know health issues and causing like all the glands to not function properly and it's so delicate that whole process you know if you get one thing out of whack um, messes up everything it, it it just messes up everything so yeah that's a huge right. thing so the stress thing we've talked about quite a bit so you yes. know it's it, that's a whole process of really just saying what is worth my stress. So that's that, not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm gonna take, I only have so much thyroid for everybody, so much cortisol for everybody, so I'm mm -hmm. not gonna be a part of your drama. So not my circus, not my monkeys. On Facebook, it's just like, well, how dare you? Well, psh, you're off my friend list, you're gone, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, like, you can't censor me. Uh, yeah, I can, you're out, <laughs> right? You know, people post hateful comments, uh, I delete those. And if they're yeah. like, you're censoring me, well, you're gone. Right? I don't need your negativity in my life. I barely even know you, right? Mm -hmm. You know, th that's really interesting. That's because... And that's as, why you're not on my Facebook. As, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought so. <laughs> no, I mean, there's a time... There's a time... Uh, there's a time to have um, friendship in different ways. And, and But what I was going to say is that as we get older, we have, we have all of those, you know, s moments throughout our life um, where we think we can do everything and we we're in charge of everything and we uh we our opinions are everything right and yeah. like right now you know we there's a lot of opinions that are blossoming everywhere which never has been gone completely but um so having having getting into an older age and if you're younger start thinking about this but if you get into an older age you start choosing your friends wisely and, and making sure that it does support healthy lifestyle and balance and um, all of those all yeah. of those nine yards that goes along with that. And so that helps with maintaining a healthy life as well. Yeah. Um, if you're constantly having to rescue your boyfriend or mm -hmm. your friends all the time, mm -hmm. and you're the problem solver and that's where mm -hmm. your value is, mm -hmm. they are exhausting your thyroid. And you're going to end up with hyper and then hypothyroid. And then you're going to get fat. You're going to get exhausted. Mm -hmm. And no one that you rescued is going to be like, you know what? I'm going to take care of you now. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, so take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, all it really is is making a choice and making the change. Um, but understanding how to do that. Yeah. Um, the change and the choice is, is is easy enough, but understanding how to reverse these issues that Dr. Garrett talks about all the time. Yeah. That we need to uh, make sure that we understand what that is and how to do that. But making the choice of doing that, and I, I say that in every episode. Yeah, everything's choice, and that that's the the two the two big things that we do. When we deal with hormones and, and exhaustion and all that mm -hmm. stuff with patients to help them kind of re rebalance the hormones is that you know when stress comes in not my circus not my monkey so just saying that all the time Psh, sorry or that's making not my circus. A, or making a mantra that's you know that works for you yeah yeah and then the second thing is knowing it, so if it is your circus and your monkeys what can you change and what can you not change and know the difference between the two and stop wasting hormones on things that aren't going to change which is other people which is you're the only thing that's going to change yeah which is also part of education um like i you know 
I have a 28 year old and an eight year old so I I have a different style of educating them in life now than I did but I'm also um, that person who is helping the 28 year old understand who he is and all of those things that I didn't get a chance to tell him regarding uh, yeah. you know, lifestyle change, health, habits, um, emotional regulation, all kinds of different things. I'm talking about my eight-year-old right now. I can, I can tell you how to get out. I, I have the, a couple friends that are constantly asking me about, complaining about the relationship, and I'm always just, he'll call me and I'm like, yeah, y'all should break up. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> awful. <laughs> you deserve to be loved. For who you are yeah. and then she'll call up and she'll be like oh this is how awful everything is like yeah that's messed up y'all should break up <laughs> and i get just saying that all the time they don't ever they don't ever ask me my opinion anymore <laughs> no <laughs> like because you both they deserve to, to be happy yes everybody needs stop to exhausting deserve your, to stop exhausting your your hormones nobody wants to hear your that stress levels nobody wants to hear it they they, they just they just want to be heard so they can complain and then keep repeating the same god Dang problems. You know, and that's when you hand them a tissue and you say, you know, I know this great therapist. That's right. You say, yeah. here's a tissue. <laughs> right. Bye. A diva came on. Hey, hey a diva. diva drummer. So. How you doing? So, yeah. So, if you haven't been on here, welcome. Um, we see some people coming in and out of the program. So, uh, we'll post your guys' questions post too. Post questions. If you have some, some advice on anything. So we talked about stress, we talked about smoking. The mm -hmm. last two things uh, that are the major factors in hyperthyroid, uh, taking too much iodine, that's the easy one. So a lot of times, uh, especially in my profession, uh, sorry, I can't, can you tell I can't roll my eyes hard enough, but it's just like, yeah, you got to take iodine. Everything's a supplement, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But no one says, why the hell are you not getting enough iodine? So iodine, you can't take that. You can, but you're more likely to screw everything up than to ask yourself, where the hell does iodine come from and why am I not eating it? So iodine comes from the ocean, which mm -hmm. is real, actual sea salt. Pink salt, black salt, kalanamuk. Uh, salt is never mm -hmm. clear. Mm -hmm. You want not iodized sea salt, you want sea salt. So pink Himalayan salt is probably the best mm -hmm. thing to start with. Mm -hmm. And that has iodine in there. Mm -hmm. And then the seaweed that soaks up the iodine in the ocean, that has iodine in there. So something like kelp, if you just get dried kelp, which is almost black, mm -hmm. and you put that in soups and sauces and stews, one serving of that has 3,000 micrograms of iodine. 3,000. Mm -hmm. The the country that consumes the most iodine is Japan, and that's twelve thousand, which is just four servings of that, or four little teaspoons of that, uh, in a day. And then the fish that eat the plants that live in the ocean that live in the salt are full of iodine too, and that's mm -hmm. your wild caught tuna and salmon, halibut, mackerel, cod, sardines, anchovies. But Americans are more likely to consume more coffee by pound than fish by pound. Most all the fish that we ever consume in America is from a uh, um, keep talking uh, I'll be right back. warehouse, right? So it's corn fed, uh, farm raised. Uh, so that's not going to be full of iodine. Nobody, no Americans eating plants from the ocean. That's for sure. And we're not eating iodized, uh, naturally iodized sea salt or real sea salt. So then we have thyroid problems. And then they do thyroid tests, and they're like, oh my God, you don't have enough iodine. So then we just give people iodine. But if you take iodine, you can actually cause people to end up in thyroid storms. And that is a nightmare. I have a patient right now that I'm dealing with. They were over-medicated, but it's the same, same basic uh, concept. Like, they'll end up feeling like they are literally going crazy. So, a uh, thyroid storm is seriously messed up to cause. But if you say the world's healthiest diets uh basically it's it's a costa rican diet the okinawa diet the, the mediterranean diet but they're just eating fish and plants and salt from the ocean so they don't have to figure this stuff out but americans we won't do that so then we have to figure it out and then we're told to, you know we, we go to seminars and they're told uh, uh they're sorry uh funded by companies that sell supplements and the supplement company says you should give everybody this supplement 
<clears throat> but no one addresses the lifestyle part or why, right? If they went out of business, does everybody get screwed, right? How come I can move to another country and suddenly my thyroid's fine, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a whole different thing, uh, lifestyle medicine versus uh, just chronic management even naturally. Yeah. But thyroid is a big problem. Our iodine supplementation can be a very big problem with that. I want to just What'd show you, you. I brought, a, so I think at the end of the show, we'll kind of, we'll talk about some products that, because I, I, we eat a lot of iodine rich foods here at my house, but this is just a, I don't know if y'all be able is to see that. it. Yeah, this them. is a, just the, Kinsen. just the kelp. Yeah. That is? Oops. Look at that. Yeah. I haven't bought the, I need to buy some more of this. So basically it looks a little bit like that. It's mm. very crunchy. I mm. eat it just like this and inevitably it sticks in my teeth. So that looks glamorous. I know, I know. So and it's it so tasty. It's very salty and that's mm. right. It's and a salty snack, but good. Mm -hmm. It has like a little. I know people don't like fishy taste sometimes, but it has a little bit of fish, like when you get nori wrap or something. Well, but you know what? So they also make different flavors now. Like you oh. can get like spicy. It's good. There's a new seaweed mm -hmm. that tastes like bacon. <laughs> you know that. Have you heard of that? No. No. <laughs> oh, so there's this. this my girls guess, love these. I guess while we're on this topic, we'll go ahead and talk about the seaweed stuff, and then we'll talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So there's all kinds of different. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Brands. Yeah. Um, so like this one's wasabi flavor, so it's a little spicy. But I've also noticed that mm -hmm. there's different flavors coming out in this. Um, all over the place. It's not just in the natural food stores. You can get it at Walmart and so oh, on yeah. and so forth. Yeah, I get it from Wal at Walmart uh, for my daughters because we live in Newton. Um, okay. And that's nori. This and is yeah. Well, the only thing that that this has in it that I'm not sure about is is that right there. The oleosin. Oh, that's okay. Okay. And then it has a little bit of brown sugar in it, so there it's a it, it has a tiny bit of sugar. Yeah. But that's probably because it's flavored. And I normally just get the uh, smoked seaweed. Yeah, the smoke's really good too. Now this has less iodine, but again, it's a really really good source of iodine. So how much? Usually like have? sixty-five micrograms. And so how much does this have? So this is oh, where's your thing? This has 3,000 micrograms of iodine. Like maybe in a teaspoon? This has 65. Are you talking about in yeah. a teaspoon or something? Yeah, because these, if I don't, have you ever, uh, so I, when I had my cooking show on TV, I, mm -hmm. I uh, made seaweed salad. Mm -hmm. And if you take this little thing, mm -hmm. like and this. soak it. You know what happens? Mm -hmm. So look, it's that big. Whoops, there Where's the go. camera? It's that big. It actually looks like dried tobacco. Mm -hmm. So this thing, will get to be this like a size of a spinach leaf, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'll just soak up the moisture. So. We're just going to sit here and eat the seaweed while we talk to you. Oh, I actually love this stuff so oh, much. Oh, I do too. Do where did you get yours from? This natural dude. food store. Uh, natural oh. grocers. They sell it in bulk. So mm -hmm. that's my favorite. Don't <clears> get <throat> the long plants. That's gross. So mm. they're all, mm. they're really salty and like slimy kind of. But the dried stuff, awesome. And when you rehydrate it, you can make a little uh, seaweed salad dressing. Super good. And you know, you can sneak this into food. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if your family is like grossed out by the a whole, even a thought of eating seaweed. Yeah. Um, just put it in your soups and your stews. Yeah. And they'll never know. Yeah, because it'll, it'll be like that's adding salt flavoring. to it. That's a flavoring. Yeah, that's a, and it won't taste like fish. Mm -mm. And not every one of these tastes like fish. Some of them are a little bit more salty. Mm -hmm. Whatever. But there you go. And what else Does you got here? It? Oh, you just want to continue on? Sure. Okay, so, like, I eat a lot of, like, <clears throat> mackerel and and sardines and things just right out of the can. Um, so, like, this particular one is, I got this at Walmart. I'm making a plug for Walmart. Um, and so, basically, the ingredients is sardines... And then it says sardines in like French or something. Organic extra olive oil. Lost sardines. Uh, organic extra virgin olive oil, water, sea salt, and natural smoke because this one 
this one I think was lightly smoked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which so, I like too. So. And so that's um, organic. And wild Planet's organic little sardines. and wild caught. And sardines, you can just, I like eating them, but you can. I just like eating them out of the can. Like in other countries, they just make them like little fish dishes, you know? Yeah, like, I put them on crackers them. and mm, mm -hmm. it's good. When we're in, um, when we're, I was flying from uh, Tokyo to Okinawa, there was a little girl that was, a uh, little girl that was crying. Oh, it was Mocha. I think Mocha was crying. And um, I had a little pack of little, uh, Nori? Seaweed Nori? Seaweed Nori. And I gave her like a piece <laughs> and she started chewing, her ears popped in and she stopped crying. Which is pretty cute. I guess funny. He's just looking out for everybody all the time. I know. I know. So this he one not my wild toilet caught, last week. <laughs> I know, I came over. <laughs> Mr. Toilet. That's what we do. And then your basic, um, your basic Star Kiss brand. Um, as long as you get it in water, and you can always add stuff to it later, like if you want to do olive oil or whatever, but I use this for just, I either eat it right out of the package yeah. or make a some kind of a salad with it. But I mean, the ingredients in this is just light, light tuna, water, vegetable broth, and salt. Yeah. Which you have to watch the salt. It's like a lot. It's 300 milligrams of sodium in that. So this needs... That's why I like to distribute it out into tuna salads and stuff like that. So it should be uh, wild caught. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they can, can... Oh, they put tuna I, in giant nets. I normally... The, I like wild yeah. planet in everything that I pick. But for Star some Kiss, reason... Starfish has wild caught. You just have to read the... Like every now and then I get... I get uh, I miss up, mess up and get the wrong one. But... No, there's wild caught in this too. Okay. And then it's super easy. Well, yeah, because more companies are figuring out we can't use MSG uh, because people aren't buying our products because everyone's getting privy to it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and they're doing, you know, even like the farm raised everything. So, and yes. I got this at Dylan's because it was on sale for a dollar a pack. Yeah. So, so you know, adding your labels. fish and, and seaweed to your diet. And real sea salt, it, it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, mm -hmm. especially just a little bit. And that gives your thyroid the perfect amount of iodine it needs because you're, think of like little pools that you have. But iodine's in your breast tissue, iodine's in your brain, it's in your salivary glands, and it's in your thyroid. And so, when, and, and I think your adrenal glands. So when you consume it, it fills up these pools and then it goes to the next pool, next pool, next pool, and then you pee out the excess. So naturally, in, in those kind of therapeutic doses from food, you're going to get the right amount and pee it out. But if you take it exogenously as a supplement, you can get way too much too fast and cause thyroid storm. So That's we don't want to do that. And in 17 years <laughs> of practice of reversing Hashimoto's and Graves and, and thyroid issues, only once have I ever resorted to iodine. And it didn't work. <laughs> so, hmm, really? Uh, okay. This whole thing. And see, so we're going to be trying to pick out that seaweed for like the whole I know, it's all in my tape. <laughs> okay. It's good. It's so, probably helping. So, so, I mean, yeah, the treatment, is, uh, the treatment that it is radioactive iodine, which is what uh, people, they give it in a liquid form, I believe. And then after that, they take a pill, I, I believe. I did some research. And so... That that treatment, other organs that uptake, which he just said, were breast, eye, stomach, cervix, and uh, cervix, yeah. salivary glands, which uh, which I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the eyes. So uh, I don't think I have it up here, but I'll see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. eyes become also a part of that issue, <clears throat> and what happens is, oops, um, it's called bulging eye. X. The bulging eye syndrome. Let's see, X ophthalma, not plegia. Okay, so what's that lady's name? Hold on, there's a there's a gal. Um, Just put bulging eye thyroid. Well, it should be just right here. I know. It always is just right here, isn't it? It's oh, wait, that's it. Go down. Whoops. No, there, that's not her. Oh, that's not the one, but it's kind of. 
Yeah. Okay, so I'll show you this. Um, but there's a gal who does a talk show who actually has hyperthyroidism. There is, that's not a really bad case of the bulging eyes. Um, but she does a... <clears throat> And that, that, it's going to take a while before that happens. But this is, this is how you know. So you see me, I have sunset eyes, right? So, uh. Sensitive eyes, you said? No, sunset. Sunset eyes. Right? Always looks like I'm high or something. Oh, I gotcha. Like, uh, like Southern, like, how y'all doing? Like, <laughs> okay. like Mississippi syrup kind of talk. But, uh, if you can have, if you can see all the white around the eyes, that's like a big problem for most people. That means typically means the eyes are being pushed out because there's these fatty uh, pads behind. And uh, hyperthyroid patients, they will have extra edema back there, and it pushes the eye out to where eventually they can you can see around the whole iris, the whole color part. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like they're trying to hypnotize you when they're talking. Man, there's like a few people. If you're like that, I'm sorry, you gotta get that fixed. But uh, man, it, like it's, it wears me out because I feel like they're gonna try to like uh, uh, hypnotize me or something. It's like, <laughs> look into my eyes, like that. Okay, so. I can't think of her name, but she's a daytime, she's a daytime talk show host and. Uh, Ellen. Nope. Ricky Lake. Nope. Oh, that was old school, right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's old school. I know. Um, talk show. Talk show host. That's a Fox. woman. Oprah. No, uh, she's African American. Oh. Uh, and she's she wears really fun clothes. It's Oprah. And, um, no. <clears throat> yeah, she wears fun clothes too. Okay, I know sorry, who you're talking about, but I can't. I, I don't watch her show. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. I'll think of it and maybe. Oh, there she. There, I think it. No, that's not her. She. Oh, she is black. Okay. Well, she's pretty. Do you guys know who it is? Maybe that was before. It's she a black. Um, Host of the talk show. Yeah. Where I does their eyes bulge out? Like they that? do, but that's uh, that's not her. Yeah, that's what it, I'm thinking Niecy? about. It might be Niecy Nash. Niecy Nash. Or Wendy Wendy Williams. That's who it is. Wendy Williams. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Does her eyes pop out? Well, uh, she got those giant fake eyes. They have. Ha she has had an episode hmm. of it, which caused her eyes to come for to bulge out further than they. Than yeah, these see, then these pictures, yeah, they yeah, knew. Wendy Williams, and so basically, I've never her. Um, basically she she's she's got Graves' disease, yeah, and so her eyes are bulging, and she's, none of the pictures that I see here actually exhibit any of that. She's got those so. big eyelashes. Can't see. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so there you go. So there's all kinds of symptomatic stuff that can. So, so what are some of the things that if somebody feels like they have a thyroid issue, what are some of the sort of basic symptoms? Well, so it's hyper. So essentially it's going to be shaky. Like if, if you're hyper, your hands will tr tremble like that. Um, and then your eyes kind of like bug out. You feel lots of pressure. You can feel your pulse. You can feel your pulse here. Sometimes people's heads will sit there and knock because the blood pressure. Oh. Uh, hypertension. Hypertension. Hyper everything pressure. excess. So skinny, shaky, like a, a chihuahua. Like chihuahua. Oh. Chihuahuas are hyperthyroid looking. The bulging eyes. Maybe they shaky. really are, and we just don't know that. They're probably a Datsun <laughs> with hyperthyroid. Right? Yes. I think that might be true. So it's kind of the opposite of the hypo problem. But some hyperthyroids can, uh, I think like 5% are overweight. And some, something like 5% of hypos are underweight. Mm -hmm. So it's not always that traditional like, oh, if they're too skinny or too fat, they might be hypo or hyper with that. Mm -hmm. And the last thing though, mm -hmm. the last thing is the thing I specialize in the, the most when, it talks, when we talk about reversing autoimmune conditions. I love it because no matter what autoimmune condition, it's always the same thing. Which is a real big issue in, in thyroidism. Yes. So. And that is molecular mimicry and T cell dysregulation. Mm -hmm. So secondary to infections, they almost always start as infections. 
And this is the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and uh, Metabolism. And uh, the two major infections that we see that lead to the secondary molecular mimicry uh, attacking the um, thyroid peroxidase or the thyro no the thyroid stimulating uh, hormone is Yersinia intercolitica. That sounds good. Intercolitica. Yersinia intercolitica. So you guys might know Yersinia as the family that uh, produced Yersinia pestis, which is, you know what that is? Pesticides? No. Pestis. It, it was a pesticide because it killed most, Pestis, of the, most of Europe. Pestis plague? Yes, plague. So the black plague, which is racist, uh, was from Yersinia <laughs> pestis, that same family. Now this is not the plague. It was called the black plague. Yeah. Because I think it, Why? a lot of people died. That's where that, you know, the uh, Ring Around the Rosies? Ring Around the Rosies, Pocket Full of Posies. You know that song? Yes. You know why it's that way? No. So the Ring Around the Eyes is they're sick and dying. The Pocket Full of Posies is flowers to mask the scent that they're dying. So rose, Ring Around the Rosies, that Pocket Full of Posies. That was made for Achoo, the Black, Achoo. The black Plague? Yeah. Oh my God. It's a terrible. It's so full of like. Terrible song. Trivia. Achu achu, what else? What's the uh, last part? Ring round posies, pocket full posies, ashes, ashes. We all, we all fall, fall down. down. Yeah. So it's achu achu. Oh, I never we all knew fall down. that. I used to sing and play that song <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's what in Paris. <laughs> oh my god. Have you guys been through the uh, the cab? Uh, what's it called? The uh, mm -hmm. you go underneath. Did you ever go to Europe? Did you ever go to Paris? You know, I, that's on my list to do. Hopefully with the a very beautiful friend of mine. So underneath of it is all the dead bodies from the Black Plague. They make walls of the people and then it's just solid bones, right? So I went through there. Oh, wow. When I was in Paris, it's not a big deal. Wow. But uh, holy crap, there was a lot of dead people. There's a lot of bones underneath Paris. You know, there's been a lot of um, epidemics and plagues and, um, mm -hmm. you know, just all kinds of stuff. In our on our planet. Oh yeah. So let's just try to not like taxi driver. Do more. So then right. the other one. So then uh, Yersinia intercolitica comes from undercooked pork. That's right. Pork is the devil. No, there is the devil. No, just cook it really good. Cook it really good. So. And try to get organic as much as possible. That's or what, farm uh, yeah, raised or whatever. Free range pigs. Because you know when you cook bacon, right? The bacon's not quite done sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like the fat part. Mm -hmm. and people like that. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm like almost burnt, right? Mm -hmm. Kill everything in there. But it doesn't always kill all the cysts. And then those cysts can open up and then uh, thrive in your gut. And then you get, uh, if your immune system is suppressed from sugar, stress, and chemicals, then it can mistake that Yersinia as tissue antigens. And then it creates this autoimmune Graves disease. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, going back to the previous episodes, be sure and watch those. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important to your immune system is is part of a lot of this happy healing in your body. Yeah. Um, there's other there's other glands that uh, have a lot to do with helping your immune system too. So, be yeah. sure and go back and watch some of those episodes. It's kind of like the thymus when we talked about that. The thymus. Um, we started out pineal. with the pineal gland, uh, then we went to the thymus, and be sure and do your tapping when you go to bed at do night. Do we do the thymus do after the thymus? meditation and your thymus gland. It was it, you know, it was named, the thymus gland was named after the thyme plant. Because thymic. Mm hmm Yeah. Yep. It's a little trivia there. Tonight was trivia night. Nice, yeah. Very nice. Well, we're, we're getting close to the end of the show. So one more virus. So one then. more virus. Okay. One more. So that's a bacteria. So then the virus that's most indicative, according to that research journal, for causing molecular mimicry. Yep. Is Coxsackie B virus. So it's B twenty five. No B four. B four. Before what? Before before Coxsackie. Do you know what B vitamin reverses B cancer? B nine. No, it's a joke. Oh. <laughs> right. Bad joke. 
<laughs> you know, somebody told me a joke the other day. Speaking of, of bad jokes. Oh, oh, this is really actually funny. What does an 80-year-old pirate say? What? Oh, I'm 80. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So you gotta stay till the end of the show That's because terrible. things get really good. So Coxsackie B vitamins, uh, Coxsackie A is uh, like hand, foot, mouth disease that kids get. Uh, so they get a little rash, you know, mm -hmm. not a big deal. Uh, Coxsackie B is uh, what ends up becoming, uh, I believe it's a, like a gut virus uh, that we have. So then people end up having uh, autoimmune conditions after mm -hmm. this. If, again, so all those things that we talked about, so with Graves' disease, or let's say uh, hyperthyroid, so as we wrap this up, if you have hyperthyroid, the fix is to stop causing it to be hyper, which is our diet and our lifestyle, right? It's all that stress, the mm -hmm. chemicals, and mm -hmm. then how we balance our hormones, or what, sorry, what we eat. Mm -hmm. So that's easy, that's functional lifestyle medicine 101, that's basic, basic fix for most people, create a lifestyle that's not exhausting your thyroid, and then your thyroid stops exhausting. But the autoimmune component is the same as all the other autoimmune stuff that we've talked about. It's T cell dysregulation molecular mimicry. So that's where we do, we look for the intermediary molecular mimics through like food sensitivity testing or immunoglobulin testing, which we do a ton of. Then we s teach people to stop eating those things. Their body stops attacking their thyroid. Right. And then the grave part just disappears. But if they don't fix why their T cells are making these mistakes, right? Why it looks at your cinea and goes, oh, I think that's thyroid, right? If you don't fix why Neighborhood Watch is making a mistake, why your T cells are making mistakes, then you just end up with other, other causes later. So that's where we do things very different at the clinic where we talk about changing the food, changing the chemicals, and changing the stress that suppresses your T cells to then make those molecular mimic mistakes. And all that sounds really complicated, but it's very simple. Mm -hmm. It's very straightforward in reversing all those things that they told you you cannot reverse. Your body's always wanting to heal until we stop causing the problem. It's not going to heal. It's like our bodies are fight or flighting. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, shit, i got to get out of here. No, we got to fight. You get all excited about this. Yeah. And then yep, yep. the great Suzanne... All right. Has a uh, little story for us, which uh, I love. This a little, little, a little ending note okay. on the soft science side of all of this, which also has a lot to do with um, regulating our lifestyle yes. and uh, calming down of trying to do too much, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, basically, emotion is energy in motion. And elevated emotions carry a higher frequency than survival emotions. And, and, and survival emotions, emotions are, are the fight or flight. So basically, our body is tuned into that, but only if we're getting ready to get hit by a car, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that everyday emotional stuff should be fight or flight. Right. Um, or survival emotions. So if you want to create change, you have to do it from a level of energy that's greater than guilt, pain, fear, anger, shame, and feelings of unworthiness. And there's probably, a, you know, ten more things that we can add to that list. But in fact, lower vibrational energy that you are feeling cannot carry the thought of your future dream. Those things will lower your vibration. And you'll live at the, that level. Um, it will carry only a level of consciousness equal to those limited emotions. Yeah. So if we continue to live in that lifestyle, that is where we'll remain. Yeah. And then in addition to that, our health decline can decline and we'll be even more unhappy and unhealthy. So yeah. make a choice to, to create change in your life. Um, so that your future can become better. And you think about that too, as we wrap up, is like, disease is not disease. Disease is the normal expected outcome for abnormal situations. So you can't constantly live in shame and guilt and, and that be your motivation and think you're gonna thrive. Right. You're never gonna thrive from that. Right. You can't just try to do 30 things every single day 
and fail every single day because you can't and think your thyroid's gonna be okay. It's not, it's not. And if you continue to try to do all of those things and fail, then all of those other emotions right. are gonna come into play anyway because then you know, you're know you battling all of that stuff yeah. too, so. So with, you know, like we keep saying throughout all this is that you know, what if you lived a lifestyle worth living? where you could poo and pee and sleep and have energy and brain thoughts all day long and like have that sense of calm and, and normal in your life. And it's not all that complicated. So the other thing too, yeah. um, so as you guys know, I'm helping promote a new clinic uh, called the Genomic Wellness Center. I'm very excited about it. It's using some of uh, my functional lifestyle medicine protocols, but then very, for very specific uh, specialties. So we have uh, Dr. Padilla who specializes in re uh, kind of normalizing and reversing uh, anxiety and depression. We have Dr. Kristen Lloyd, uh, who I'm super excited about, um, to help reverse uh, thyroid, or sorry, uh, um, diabetes. diabetes. And uh, also sustainable weight loss, right? So she specializes in that. And then we have uh, Dr. or sorry, we have Scott Spradlin, who I'm excited that he joined um, our, our, our group to specialize in reversing, uh, or basically using drug-free lifestyle medicine to reverse addiction. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. Uh, and then I specialize in epigenetics and then also reversing Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, uh, IBS, reflux, that kind of stuff. And then, who am I missing? Um, oh shoot, who else there? Um, I feel bad. Uh, well, the women's, women's doctor. Oh, that's not there yet. Oops. Um, on that's on the wrong here. page. Who, who are we missing? Sherry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sherry Clark. Uh, so she's going to uh, specialize in, of course, thyroid. So reversing uh, thyroid conditions. Um, and then also specializing in some autoimmune reversals. And then um, Cassie McCabe is a, the health coach there. And basically that or that genomic wellness group, uh, they're going to specialize in the really comprehensive functional lifestyle medicine protocol, mm -hmm. but then also using health coaching to extend it out. So kind of like my practice, I'm very kind of just crash course, get it done but the new clinic is actually going to do longevity care. So mm -hmm. it's not only you know fixing now, but really how to maintain those changes and become this new person mm -hmm. uh, through their kind of like hero's journey uh, through the rest of the year. So, and then uh, we're trying to get Dr. Mallory on for birth fit and for um, um, basically how to have a, a drug-free pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the medications that people take when they're pregnant interfere with the fetus. Mm -hmm. And so there's not a lot of options for patients for that. But the whole goal of the clinic, which I love, is purely driven out of how to reverse and normalize very specific conditions so we're not managing you for the rest of your life, which no one really That's does right. that stuff. So That's right. super excited to be a part of that. Super excited. Um, and so next next month, yeah, Dr. Next, Lloyd's going to be uh, visiting on these weekly shows. So yeah, so next that. month we're going to have Dr. Uh, Kristen Lloyd, and she's going to help um, talk about very specific things on reversing type two diabetes, type three diabetes, and better managing type one, and maybe even we'll talk a little bit maybe potential of reversing that a little bit too if you can. Um, so on the third, we're gonna have, did you know type two and type three diabetes is reversible? And then on the 10th, we're gonna have reversing diabetes through epigenetics and our diet and lifestyle. Um, on the 17th, reversing diabetes, evolution of diabetic care and new technology that helps. And then on the 24th, Dr. Lloyd's 10 ways to a healthier blood sugar. Um, and then we'll talk about sustainable weight loss, I think in that one too. Awesome. So yeah, and then, uh, I believe in December we'll have Dr. Padilla and the whole topic will be anxiety depression reversal and normalizing, finding your kind of happiness. And then in January, we're gonna be focusing on healthy, sustainable weight loss so people hopefully won't be doing the New Year's resolutions and 
doing a bunch of gimmicks and then they all fail and then they feel like failures and they keep yo-yoing and all that. So we want to do that very, very different. But we'll have uh, Dr. Kristen Lloyd on again to talk about that. So Awesome. And you can uh, start checking out the uh, well, yeah, the, website. the website that we're, we'll be adding all of this stuff to as far as um, the future programming and um, yeah. a book that you offer and stuff like that. So um, it's the genomicwellnessgroup.com. Yeah. So good awesome. things coming. So thanks for joining us tonight and supporting everything that we do here and share the video if you can and go back and check out some previous episodes. Yeah. And uh, we'll be also having that uh, filtered over to YouTube so you can see it on the website as well. Yeah, we got to figure out how to get a hundred and got to get interns get 181 episodes <laughs> yeah. indexed, yeah. transferred over so that it's searchable and you guys can look at all the different categories throughout uh, the last four or five years. It's been a while. Long time. So. All right. Ma. Love you guys. Thank, Thank you, you for uh, joining us. Uh, feel free to post more questions. But uh, oh, there is one question. Hold uh oh. On. Oh, is, is Graves disease hereditary? Abigail asks. Yeah, so um, the typically almost all things are not really hereditary. 99% of uh, things are not genetic. But you can have a predisposition for that, which means you have to work a little bit harder than someone else. So if you think about like two people, co-workers work together, uh, and one can eat Twinkies all day long and she's scrawny as can be and the other one like thinks of a, a donut and she gains 20 pounds. They both can be healthy weights but one person has to work a little bit harder than the other because of some genetic predispositions that are passed through epigenetically. Mm -hmm. So kind of but not really okay. with that. Awesome. Yeah, that was the that was the one question. And it's Abigail. I know. All she's right. pretty awesome. Okay, so there you have it. All right, you guys. Um, thanks a lot, everybody, for hanging in there with us. Keep the questions coming. Bye. Bye, y'all.